Periodically, I study the table of the elements, and one day I realized I don't know nearly enough about helium. I could turn to the internet, obviously, and I have, but I'm seeking a more personal experience, a more intimate connection with this noble gas. I'm at Moffett Field in Mountain View, California, home of NASA Ames Research Center, and interestingly, it's also home of Eureka, America's only Zeppelin. Oh, there he oh. is, Brian. <laughs> Very Adventures, nice. Zeppelin Eureka. Over 246 feet long. It's the largest airship flying today. We top it up with over 7,000 cubic meters of helium. So that gives us a few metric tons of, of lift, and that allows us to carry enough fuel to be flying our 12 passengers for a full day. Hello. Hello. Take a seat. Pass the seatbelt, please. As far as helium experiences go, flying in a Zeppelin is hard to beat. The power of helium. Eureka is flying high. Probably the only thing that could bring it down is if we were running out of helium. Turns out, we are. You might wonder how we could possibly run out of helium. It's the second most abundant element in the universe. And it's being manufactured constantly in stars. Stars are just helium factories. And helium production is the primary industry of the universe. So how could we ever run out? The properties that make helium useful are the same properties that cause it to be rare on Earth. Now, I know it may have been a while since you've had a chemistry class, so I'll keep it simple. Helium is the second lightest element in the universe, second only to hydrogen. In fact, it's so light, our little planet has trouble hanging on to it. Now, we have no lack of hydrogen because hydrogen hooks up with heavier elements that anchor it to the Earth. For instance, what you call water, I call two hydrogen atoms in a threesome with an underage oxygen atom. And don't even get me started on polysaccharides. But poor celibate helium doesn't form bonds. It's aloof, standoffish, hence the term noble gases, which is better than calling them gas holes. So with nothing to hang on to, all the helium that should be here has left the building. The only reason we have any helium on Earth is because it's produced by the radioactive decay of uranium and thorium. Most of that escapes, but a little bit is trapped in natural gas deposits, and that's where we get our helium. The U.S. started stockpiling it after World War I at the Federal Helium Reserve near Amarillo, Texas, the helium capital of the world. Until a couple decades ago, there weren't many uses for it. But today, helium is indispensable as a coolant for superconducting magnets in MRI machines and particle accelerators, and for pressurizing and purging space shuttle fuel tanks. In fact, NASA is the top industrial user of helium, going through a million cubic feet per shuttle launch. If pressurizing space shuttle fuel tanks and cooling superconducting magnets at national laboratories seems too esoteric, well, they're not the only ones that could be affected by a helium shortage. Okay, stop, pinch it, pinch it and stop. Good! Oh. Marie Mandoli is San Francisco's balloon lady. To have as little friction on your fingers mm. as possible, you see? And roll it Do you it get off. like guitar players? Do you get a kind of callus? Yeah, been there since I was 19. Is that how long you've been in the helium business? Yeah. How'd you get into it? Just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Marie has first-hand knowledge of the coming helium crisis. So here's what happened. About, I don't know, a year and a half ago, with no preamble at all, our gas company phoned up one day and says, well, you can't get helium this week. And we said, well, this is sort of like having, you know, a diner and not being able to get eggs. You know, well, what do you mean we can't get helium? He says, well, we don't have any. That was just a temporary blip in Marie's helium supply, but it was a sign of things to come. It'll, it'll be a different world as it is, and we just have to adapt. When balloons don't float. Yeah, right, right, when balloons don't float. <laughs> Back at Moffett Field, I feel a new kinship with this lonely element. And why not? It taps into such a primal desire. 
Just like helium, haven't we always wanted to fly? And don't worry, Airship Ventures is in no immediate danger. They already have their helium and only need to top it off a bit. But it looks like the U.S. helium supply could be depleted in a decade or so. And the world may be helium-free by the end of the century. Which means we live in a special time when balloons do float and zeppelins fly. For Time.com, I'm Brian Mallow.